Here's a short overview of the new tools and features coming with the CC4D Tools Update 1.0.41. This is a smaller update as it mainly fixes some bugs and issues, but it also comes with two new features and two new OBJ workflow tools. The first new feature is the integration of the expression wrinkles in the auto material setup. And the second new feature is that the CC4D control rig can now also be used on non-standard or custom joint hierarchies that have been characterized in Character Creator. But let's start with setting up the expression wrinkles. To be able to activate the expression wrinkles during the CC4D material setup, they need to be activated on the character in Character Creator first. This can be done by going to the Expression Wrinkles tab in the Modify panel and checking the Activate Expression Wrinkles checkbox. And when exporting the character as an FBX file, make sure to export a JSON configuration file with it, as this is also needed for the Expression Wrinkles to be set up correctly in Cinema 4D. So here I already imported the FBX file with the CC4D import character tool and its default materials and I already applied the CC4D control rig as well as the face rig to it. And as the character has been exported with a JSON configuration file and the expression wrinkles activated, I now get the new option of activating or deactivating the expression wrinkles in the CC4D auto material setup dialog. For this example, I'm going to stick with the basic material type and run the material setup. When the Activate Expression Wrinkles checkbox is checked, the material of the head will not be replaced with the head basic shader template from the CC4D Asset Browser contents, but with the head wrinkle basic shader template. And this will also go for the advanced material type. But now let's have a look at the shader. And in the shader graph of the head material, you can see the new CC4D wrinkle shader. Which is again a custom redshift shader group that takes care of blending the diffuse, roughness, normal and height wrinkle textures with their respective base textures exported from Character Creator. It also utilizes some additional flow maps exported from Character Creator as well and some wrinkle masks located in the CC4D asset browser contents. Within the CC4D wrinkle shader, those masks are controlled by the driver parameters on the wrinkle shader. And those parameters themselves are driven by the new wrinkle solver Python tag that has been added to the CC character null object automatically during the material setup. And this wrinkle solver is where most of the math is happening and that serves as a connection between the character's body mesh posemorph tag and the shader. And now let's take a look at the render result by firing up the Redshift IPR. Right now we can't see any of the expression wrinkles as the character still has a neutral facial expression. So I will quickly adjust some of the face rig controls to change that. And you can see that this immediately triggers some of the expression wrinkles in certain regions of the face. You can also find some additional controls for the expression wrinkles on the CC character null object under the wrinkles tab. Here you can find 13 groups corresponding to the different wrinkle regions from Character Creator. With the overall parameter you can control the overall strength of all expression wrinkle regions. And with the strength parameter within each group, you can control the strength of each wrinkle expression region individually. The curve parameter controls the rate of appearance. This is the speed with which the expression wrinkles are blended in when the controls of the face rig or the facial pose modes of the character are animated. And with those parameters you can dial in the level of the expression wrinkles to your liking. Now let's have a look on how to use the control rig with a character that has a non-standard or custom joint hierarchy. That means a joint hierarchy that has not been generated in Character Creator or AccuRig. 
But for this to work, the character needs to be characterized inside of Character Creator first, so we can export a 3DX profile, which can then be used by the CC4 d Control Rig setup to recognize the character's joint hierarchy. For this example, I'm going to use a simple character from Mixamo.com, which I downloaded as an FBX file in its T-Pose. The next step is to import the FBX in Character Creator as a character with the Humanoid non standard type. We can then use one of the many profiles Character Creator already offers to characterize the character or we can do the characterization manually. I'm not going into detail here now on the characterization process as it is pretty straightforward and there will be a longer version of this video available in the CC4D documentation. And if you want to learn more about this and the humanoid workflow in Character Creator, there is a whole page dedicated to this topic on courses.reillusion.com. I will put the links in the description. And once the characterization is finished and the human IK is activated, we can go ahead and export the character as an FBX file. In the export settings, I'm using Cinema 4D as my target tool preset. I'm gonna export a JSON configuration file and I'm using the FBX option mesh. But the most important setting is here at the bottom and this is the export HIK profile checkbox. When this is checked, a 3DX profile will be exported with the character's FBX, which we can then use in Cinema 4D with the control rig setup. Back in Cinema 4D, I'm going to click the CC4D import character icon and select the FBX file with the Mixamo character exported from Character Creator. I want to import the file with pose morphs. I want to remove the morph targets. For the materials, I will leave everything on default, but I want to apply the control rig to the character. And as you can see, the character has been imported correctly and the CC4D control rig has been applied to the character. But this is just the first step in opening up the system a bit more, because the control rig is clearly built and optimized for joint hierarchies that were generated by Character Creator. So for example, if your character has more than three spine joints, there may be some issues with the placement of the controls. So eventually, at some point in the future, I'm going to rebuild the setup of the spine to make sure it can handle more than three joints while still making sure the controls are in the right spot. And last but not least, let's have a look at the new tools. And those are the CC4D Import OVJ tool and Export OVJ tool. And as the name says, with those two scripts you can import an OVJ file exported from Character Creator into Cinema 4D and the other way around. Those tools were mainly born out of my own workflow necessities as I like to do most of my modeling and sculpting in Cinema 4D, but you may ask why does it need two custom scripts for that as Cinema 4D already offers OBJ in and exporting natively? I'll show you the issues with that in a second. Usually I start off my character creation by loading the neutral base in Character Creator, maybe adjusting the initial body proportions a bit here, but almost immediately exporting it as an OBJ file to just have one piece of geometry and to be able to do the main part of the initial character shape creation in Cinema 4D. And later I will apply the modeling result to my Character Creator character as a morph slider. Let's first have a look what happens with the native C4D OBJ im and exporter. To be able to correctly re-import the OBJ file into Character Creator, it needs to have the same vertex index and the same OBJ groups as the exported OBJ from Character Creator. When opening up the OBJ file in Cinema 4D, I can either split the geometry by object which would give me the mesh with the correct vertex index, but without any of the OBJ groups. Or I can split the geometry by its polygon groups, and as the name says, this would give me multiple objects, 
based on the OBJ's polygon groups, but it would also completely destroy the vertex index. And with the native C4D OBJ export settings, the only option I have regarding the OBJ groups is to export the objects as groups. And for the sake of showing you what happens, let's go ahead and export this guy. And back in Character Creator, I'm going to create a Morph Slider for the full body. As the Source Morph, I want to take the Current Morph and under Target Morph, I'm going to load the OBJ file. And I'm also going to load the checksum file, which was exported with the initial OBJ from Character Creator. But as you can see, I will get an error message that the base and the target character are not compatible. Now let's go back to Cinema 4D and try that one more time with the new CC4D tools. I'm going to click the Import OBJ icon in the toolbar and select the same OBJ file exported from Character Creator as before. And it may take a moment longer than opening up a OBJ the default way, but the script will now convert all the OBJ groups into polygon selections to make sure the vertex index and the groups stay intact. And when the import is done, I have one piece of geometry and all the necessary groups. Now I can go ahead again and modify the shape, model or sculpt my character. And when I'm done, I'm going to select it and click the CC4D export OBJ icon in the toolbar. And in Character Creator, I will again create a new morph slider for the full body. I want to use the current morph as the source morph. Select the OBJ file and the checksum file. And now everything will work correctly. I have the shape I created in Cinema 4D back as a morph slider in Character Creator. And from here I can now start to build my character in Character Creator. If you have any questions or experience any issues or bugs, feel free to drop me a line in the comments or send me a short email to cc4dtools at gmail.com.